Dear distinguished participants and uh, presenters, uh, first of all, I wish uh, all of you healthy and fruitful day again. And first, uh, I would like to thank the organization committee for this uh, wonderful uh, Congress and wish a great success at the end of the uh, days. And uh, today in the section, uh, we will uh, have uh, three presentations about uh, using apilanil in apitherapy. Uh, first of all, for saving time, I would like to invite to Mrs. Alina Varadi uh, from Casabio in Romania. And uh, Mrs. Varadi will uh, talk about the harvesting utilization clinical cases uh, of apilanil today. Yes, it's your turn, uh, please, Mrs. Varadi. Thank you very much. Hello for everybody. Uh, I, I want to ask the organization if uh, they will um, share the screen with the um, uh, recording or I will put it. You can put it, Alina. Okay. You can put it. So let's do it. The second. Because I was thinking the first moment they was ask me and I would think that they will do it. The second, please. Hello for everybody. My name is Alina Baradi. I'm from Romania. First of all, I want to wish for all of you a happy birthday for the bees, for the researchers, from the happy therapists, for the pollinated uh, consumer in the world. My presentation today is about um, apilarnil. The name uh, is uh, drone larva. And um, let's see how we can harvest correctly how we can utilize it and clean it for case after we use this product more than 11 years. The big products made of the entry content of the honeycomb cells where the drone larva lives until seven days before converting including the common jelly, pollen, the bread, water, and honey. On the seven days, the drone larva has the higher number of the sexual cells. And that is the moment when you can harvest the most correctly the apilarnil. This product was invented in 1980, about um, 24 different um, uh, medallion inventor, medallion, uh, he was received um, on the period uh, when he was uh, recognizing like a beekeepers, famous beekeepers here in Romania. And the word apilanol comes from api, bees, lar, larva, and Nicholas, and il, ilieshu. It's the name of the beekeepers who give this name from the drone larva here in Romania. Um, how we can harvest correctly apilanol? The nest must be well coordinated. The queen must have enough space to can lay eggs. Uh, and he must use uh, specific frames from drone, who you know that have a little big um, um, hexagon frame inside. Uh, harvest a pillar meal, you can do in the different way. You can press by the comb. You can centrifugate the comb. You can extract piece by piece or extract by the specific device. But in the finale, you must do uh, filter apilar, the apilar nail because you can find inside varroa. Apilar nail must be harvested in maximum hygiene condition and to arrive in the freezer in maximum 13 minutes during the harvest period. So if you harvest, in 30 minutes you stop, you put in the freezer, you start again to harvest, again you put in the freezer in 30 minutes, because if you're not put inside in the freezer, you will start to develop the pathogen. For this, the Ustom seals, what we use in apilarnil production should be disinfected, boiled after every extraction. And frames who contain the pillar meals can sit, uh, sit outside the hive not more than 30 minutes. Transportation must be done in the condition of the freezer temperature, meaning minus 10 degrees. 
even if the pila meal is mixed with honey, for example, it still keep in freezer. Otherwise, will develop pathogens. How to harvest correctly a pila meal? Most of the people they use. Um, Harvest a pilar meal after some days. Why? Because the body of the drone is higher, but it's not the correct way to harvest. The correct way is in seven days before the frame are kept. So uh, if you harvest uh, the larva in the seven days, normal, the pilar meal must look like this, not like that. And after you triturate it, you filter, and after you put in the uh, correct pot. Biological composition of the pillar meal, it's really very interesting because you will be surprised to see how um, food, quality food is this drone larva. It's so many minerals, vitamin, and um, the composition what it's really great for our body. So 97% of the pillar meal, it's a body of the drawn larva. And 3% it's common food larva with rare jelly pollen, bee bread, honey, with what uh, you feed. They feed themselves. You found there in the cells. And a lot of sperms larva inside. Hormones, human testosterone wasn't detected. Prolactin, estradiol, not detected. One substance testosterone-like was found in concentration very, very low in one gram of apilar meal. Water, proteins, glucid, lipids, ash, pH, all these substances, you can see that um, uh, drone larva are very rich, very rich food for human body. Um, scientific study and practice recommended to take drone larva in the different um, um, necessity from the body to help the body. Like when it's necessary to uh, regenerating, energizing, vitalizing in general, uh, to increase the resistance to infection, to stimulate the protein's metabolism, to increase the spermatozoan numbers and improve their mobility, uh, influence sex determination. Uh, you know that uh, we do the um, um, experiment with the animals and uh, there we saw that uh, in the moment when the animals uh, consume a pillar meal, uh, they deliver mainly males. No mutagenic of uh, teratogenic risk, not even for high dose, increase the concentration capacity and endurance memory, stimulating the development of the children, tonifying the skin muscles, and improve the lactation. No adverse reaction, even they take high dose of apilar milk. In our experience, I want to show you a few cases. For example, first case, male, 50 years, disorders of sexual dynamics, erectile dysfunction. We offer for him the three-month acupuncture time session, a pillar named pilgrim for day in honey, one month. But after three weeks, he declared that everything is fine. The second, um, it's a male who have 42 years, cold and weakness sensation in the kidney zones. We recommended a pillar in three, four grains per day in honey. And after three days, he comes back with thanks for his life side, wife side. Consumption of a pillar meal from the man who have 34 years, premature ejaculation, Recommended treatment was apilar meal 50 grain in 500 grains of honey, dew honey, one teaspoon two times per day. After three days, better concentration of work, he was um, IT. Less uh, tiredness after two weeks, 
may problems improve it significantly. The four, uh, it's a boy from nine years, uh, nocturnal uh, anuresis five times per week minimum. Recommended treatment with a mixture of uh, 500 grams of honey uh, and mixed with the 200 grams of pollen and 50 grams of pilatinin. He take one teaspoon uh, two times a day. After four weeks, frequency reducing until two times per week. After another four weeks, symptoms disappear completely and don't return back. He followed the treatment another four weeks and everything was perfect there. Another case, it's a main, uh, male, 30 years, tiredness, high stress, um, cage finger, uh, psychical and physical asthenia, small depression. We recommended from him apical pear daily with five grams of apilacnil, five grams of deep bread, and 10 grams of raw pollen, followed by honey and um, lemon essential oil. And 10 gram royal jelly and lemonade with honey before competition. Result, benefits started to appear after first week. More balancing diuretics, uh, less tiredness, less stress before competition, better concentration. Another case, it's a sportman with 28 years. We recommended from him to take him daily diet two grains of apilarnil in his morning shake made with banana and cairo. Benefits, increase muscular power and vitality. This is a very interesting case. It's a man on 30 years with the sperm problems. We give from him the mixture with one kilogram Kaluna vulgaris honey, 500 milliliters apilarnil and 500 grains um, oh, raw pollen and five milliliters cinnamon essential oil. He takes two spoon per day. And here you can see that in 50 days, the volume increase, pH increase, sperm concentration increase a lot. Total number of the sperm ejaculated increase a lot. Total mobility increase, sperm with progressive mobility increase, Vi viable sperm increase, and present agglutination of sperm disappear, and sperm in um, dense binders disappear too. We have so different way to take in our diet apilarnil, like beer with pollen and apilarnil, triturated apilarnil. A shake with um, fresh juice and pollen and apilar meal. Peach with the bread and apilar meal. Ice cream with apilar meal, banana and pollen. Omelette with eggs and apilar meal. A mixture with honey and uh, essential oil or pate with drawn larva. So we have so many ways to consume our uh, products if we want to remain in health first or if even we want to help our body. I hope this presentation to be useful for everybody who need to consume these products. Because um, like we see here, uh, in our country, it's huge tradition to use uh, apilarnil. And um, I think the men here in our, country, in our country have a possibility to solve their problem, of course, because it's not so big things to eat. Sometimes a little apilarnil. I expect your question. I'm um, here to answer for all your uh, questions if you have. Um, yes, probably Banu will agree. The questions will come at the end of the, the section. And by the way, not to forget, uh, Mr. Kemal, the organizer of all our platform, he said that this evening, like in every evening, from 6.30 to 7.30, we'll have a big round table. 
in a special area in air meat and he will inform us by email. Okay. Okay, thank you very much for this useful presentation. And uh, I would like to invite the second presentation and uh, uh, Dr. Thomas Loger from Apizentrum Ruhr in Germany. And uh, Dr. Gloger uh, will give us a, a knowledge about an integrative component for post-cancer treatment of apilanib. Yes, uh, please, Dr. Gloger, the microphone is yours. Yes, thank you. Danu, um, the technique told me that my pre-recording will be then uh, now played. When, if you want, I can share it. Mr. Yeah, please Thomas. share it. Yes. Okay, I'm sharing. Then I go out. Thank you also to is the organizers okay? for organizing okay. this. Okay. My name is Thomas Gloger, and I will treat apilanil in this talk as an integrative component for post-cancer treatment. So, people know little of apilanil. The history goes back to the varroa mite and the drone frame cutting. For those who have difficulties in spelling it, and I know there are a lot, there's no shame. Try it with me, Api from Apis, Latin the bee, Lave like the larva from the larva, and Neil like Nikolai Iliezo, the inventor of um, Apilanil. He patented it, a Romanian guy uh, who did that. So Apilanil, Apilanil. And um, yeah, we do it, uh, no, the, what I wanted to mention, the original apilanil from Nicola Iliesu was a kind of mixture with honey, uh, perga, and drone brood. So when we talk today about apilanil, we talk about 100% drone brood. So we produce it as a freeze dry material. So here you can see a good base material, very early stages of uh, the larva, the male larva. The composition is important. And then um, when we talk about apilanil, then most people say, oh yeah, it's protein. Yes, there is proteins and a lot of amino acids I will show uh, further. But there's also a lot of sugars and a lot of lipids. And the lipids are very important. They are building blocks for membranes, for nerves and so on. So then there are a lot of micronutrients, a lot of vitamins and uh, hormones, choline, polyphenols, stem cells, po uh, polyphenols, flavonoids. So that is the secret of this product, it's the mixture. So when you see, look into the, the, the, the bees, then the mixture makes one drone and not a drone with 15 feet or a couple of thousand eyes more. It's just one drone. So this is the, the right mixture. We're talking about the right mixture and not about a high protein. When you want high protein, then they eat soy powder or milk protein or some, some rubbish. Um, this will not make you healthy. But here, the secret is in this composition as, as own. So we see it here in the nutrition value. <coughs> this is a little bit mirroring that what I already told. So we have the total fat and we see here, uh, we have monounsaturated fat, fatty acids, polyunsaturated fatty acids. So more than half of the fat are unsaturated fatty acids. And they are, again, building blocks for membranes for a lot of complex molecules in the body. Um, yeah, we have also carbohydrates. We have also very rare carbohydrates, uh, sugars, which you don't find everywhere. So here, as promised, the list of amino acids. Unfortunately, when we did this analysis, the, the labo laboratory tricked us a little bit. Um, but it gives you a good impression that from everything, there is a little bit around. So there are, it's really well distributed. 
here this 37 percent okay something like eight percent are not uh, specified but it's again the the not the single value is decisive it's really this complex mix and uh, to be honest in the literature these values um, differ also um, we still are in the process really to define this much closer so then we have other components um, okay as i have it here on the slide now, right now you see this uh, loss due to freeze drying Apilanil is a very, very sensitive material. It's not comparable to honey. And this is, makes it dangerous than when beekeepers were used to producing honey, making apilanil. It's, uh, Professor Bench once told me that when you watch bacteria in the microscope and feed them with apilanil, you can really see how they grow. And this is then a real health problem when we have this in real life. Therefore, we do freeze drying. And here in the literature, um, the loss of phenolic and antioxidative power is around 10%. So we have a loss, but the loss is limited and the freeze drying is still the best kind of, uh, the best way of making this material available. So then we have antioxidants. Here are three different values from the literature um, differing on water and ethanol there is a lot of uh, antioxidant power in the apilanil then there are a lot of phenolics then there are a lot of flavonoids and uh, yeah okay this is uh, the that's also important it's less important the geographical import um, geographical origin is less of importance we talk here always about dry matter, so the freeze dry material, and the values are taken here after capping. And the interesting conclusion from these values is um, royal jelly has less antioxidants than apilanil. So then we have the mode of action, and there are three important things. First, the micronutrients. I already showed this, that there are, is a variety of essential building blocks. It's um, um, important that these building blocks are easy to access, to build something, uh, to include it into the biosynthesis. The um, building blocks are balanced. So that's that I already said. And then we have the messengers and the hormones. And um, this gives, uh, an activation to the whole structure. So that's, um, then we have, yeah, okay, that a uh, little bit this male part. On the other hand, we see apilanil can work with man and woman. So from the logic of the traditional Chinese medicine, it's the counterpart, it's yin yang to royal jelly. It improves the nerve conduction, so this, uh, nerve uh, all the nerves the, the brain and things like this then it's a, a regulator for the metabolism the metabolism runs better and it's the from the first point the liver is less involved in treating this material so and then we have from the biology the antiviral and um, stimulation of the immune system for biologists it's not a surprise the outer skin of a larva is a kind of immune system, and this obviously can be transferred into this product. So what's that, what does that mean for um, the cancer therapy? Means the first one, the micronutrients, means we have easy food, little uh, digestion, little liver action, good composition. So the second is the messenger and the hormones give this restarting of the will to survive. It gives a stronger physical status. And um, then the third is it antagonizes the cancer at the basis. So the immune system fights the cancer cells. That's, that's the, the, the basis of the whole thing. When the immune system cannot find cancer cells, the cancer 
grows and grows. And uh, when we have, for example, an operation, then at least the rest of the cancer cells, which disguise somewhere, spread somewhere in the whatever hint, um, hint somewhere, they can then be killed by the immune system and not by the, some chemicals. So the operational approach is, it's an anabolic stimulator. It brightens the temper, the influence, it has influence on the neurovegetative system. It opposes disgruntlement, it improves body energy, vitality and regeneration. It's improvement of the memory function. It stimulates the hypophysis and the adrenal glands and all the system which comes afterwards. It stimulates male sexual function as well as for women. Stimulation of sugar metabolism and influence of insulin-based diabetes. So how we transfer that now to a holistic approach. I like this kind of therapeutic scheme. So that means that after we have a good anamnesis, we make a plan how to proceed. And we follow this plan for some time before we decide it works or it doesn't work. So we start with the hormonal and biostimulation with apilanil, three grams a day minimum, mix it with royal jelly. We have cancer management. We use high dose of propolis, two to eight grams. We have alkaline food. We stress, uh, we make stress reduction. So the oxidative stress is the cause of the cancer. And um, yeah, there, there are a lot of things. We have the column health. The column is very important. We use, for example, perga as this probiotic bacteria, but maybe there is also other action needed to support the column and to revitalize it. A lot of vitamins are made there, a lot of immune factors. So, and, um, yeah, I came my, myself to this uh, apilanil by my friend uh, Milian Bobic, who makes this power mixture, power honey, craft mischung. Um, and there he mixes all products, honey, propolis, pollen, apilanil, royal jelly, doses two teaspoons a day, um, but eventually also much higher. So that's, uh, it's also possible. Um, so and I mentioned honey, and this is very important here. Uh, a lot of people have the fashion to leave out all carbohydrates in this uh, cancer uh, situation. And <clears throat> here you see an uh, analysis of uh, energy from carbohydrates here and the death rate and the death rate goes up here, but it goes also up here much steeper when you use less energy from carbohydrates and your body needs carbohydrates alone the the, the, the brain needs 130 grams honey a day at least um, and though that means there is an optimum and of course eat not too much but don't leave it completely out so honey is an integrative component of this um, cancer therapy and uh, combination with apilanil is also profitable like uh, the propolis. So what is the conclusion to come back to apilanil? Apilanil is energizing, vitalizing and regenerating our cancer patient. It's a simultaneous action on mind and body. So it gives them the strength, the will to throw the guests out the cancer guest you don't like, you don't, you cannot kill the guest. You have to convince the guest and that takes time. So, and it helps the cancer patients to recover quicker. So, and then do not forget to combine, combine with other B products or other alternative medicine. Of course, apilanil is no uni universal elixir, but it gives a lot of positive action. So I wrote this book about AP therapy, the power of the bee in German and English available. You can have it from me. Here are my coordinates. 
Um, this number here is also WhatsApp. You can reach me by email. I hope I get a lot of questions right after this talk. But if you want to solve things individually, you can call me or contact me individually and I will answer your question. Thank you for listening to this talk. And I hope to um, have um, shown you that Apila Neel is not an exotic, but a very good product. Mm, thank you, Dr. Glocker, uh, for this uh, nice and useful pre uh, presentation. Uh, for the questions, uh, at the end of the section, maybe it's better to evaluate all of them. Thank you. And uh, uh, last but not least, I would like to invite uh, lecturer Gülsüm Merve Boyracı from Karadeniz Technical University uh, from Turkey. And uh, Mrs. Boyracı will give us uh, uh, knowledge about the androgenic uh, parts of the apilani. Yes, it's your turn, please. Herkese merhaba. Ee, doğal bir androjen kaynağı olan Apilerlin e, isimli e, çalışmamın sunumuna hoş geldiniz. Bal, propolis, arı ekmeği, polen e, veyahut da e, arı sütü bilindiği üzere e, yaygın olarak dünyada birçok uygulamalarda kullanılmaktadır. Bu bir arı ürünlerinden bir tanesi olan erkek arı larvası ise özellikle Doğu Avrupa, Afrika ve Asya'da sıklıkla kullanılmakta ve değerli bir bileşen olarak bilinmektedir. Buna rağmen Batı Avrupa'da şu anda pek bilinmediği çalışmalarla belirtilmiştir. Esas anapilernin yani erkek arı larvası, larvaların kupa dönemine geçmeden önceki 3 ile 7 günlük süreçte toplanıp, daha doğrusu hasat edildiği larvayı ifade etmektedir. Literatür çalışmalarında apilerin erkek, kuluçka, erkek arı kuluçkası, erkek arı sütü, larva homojenizatı, arı larva homojenizatları veyahut da erkek arı e, larva homojenizatları olarak farklı terimlerle adlandırılmaktadır. E, sunudaki sağ üst köşede de görüldüğü gibi Erkek arı larvalarının petek gözlerindeki daha sonra toplanıp e, homojenize edilmiş hali son olarak da altta liyopilize edilmiş apilerlinin poz formunu görebilirsiniz. Apilerlinin e, kimyasal kompozisyonlarına değinecek olursak e, yüksek oranda su ihtiva etmektedir. Bu nedenle mikrobiyolojik gelişme de son derece önemlidir. Hocalarımızın da bir önceki slaytlarda bahsettiği gibi tüketimi ve depolanması sırasında diyafilize edilmesi veyahut da dondurulması tavsiye edilmektedir. Bazı çalışmalarda ise belirli oranlarla bal ile karıştırılıp tüketilip, tüketilip saklandığı belirtilmiştir. Protein, esansiyel aminoasitler, mineral, vitamin ya da polifonörler açısından değerli bileşenlere sahip olduğu için günümüzde apilerin aslında değerli bir gıda olarak da ifade edilmektedir. Özellikle de testosteron, prolaktin, progesteron gibi birçok cinsiyet hormonları bulundurması sayesinde önem arz etmektedir. Apilerinin Duysun özelliklerine bakacağımızda sütsü viskoz yapıya sahip, sarımsı gri renkte, ekşimsi tatlı bir e, tatta e, ve e, arı, arı sütüne de benzetilerek karakteristik bir kokuya sahiptir. Bazı çalışmalarda ise yumurta benzeri kokuya sahip olduğu ifade edilmektedir. Apilerinin androjenik etkisine geçmeden önce androjen eksikli sendromundan bahsetmek istiyorum. Androjen eksikli sendromu düşük androjenik aktivite olarak ifade edilmektedir. Bazı kaynaklarda ise sağlıklı bir vücutta olması gerekenden daha az miktarda erkek cinsiyet hormonları 
Özellikle de testosteronun bulunması yine androjenik eksik, androjen eksikliği sendromu olarak ifade edilmektedir. Androjen eksikliği sendromu başta yetişkinlerde libido azalması, ergenlerde, teniste ve <gülüyor> tesislerde büyümenin gerilemesi, bilissel ve cinsel e, bilissel ve cinsel e, fonksiyonlarda gerileme, agresif tavırlar, kemik mineral yoğunluğunda ve kas kütlesinde azalmanın görülmesi, yüz, vücut veya da kısık tüylerinde ise zayıf gelişim gibi maalesef birçok negatif etkiye neden olmaktadır. Bu etkilerin minimize edilmesi amacıyla androjen replasman tedavisi bir diğer adıyla testosteronu yerine koyma tedavisi kullanılmaktadır. Bu tedavi ağız, kas içi enjeksiyon, deri altı implantlar ve transdermal olmak üzere farklı yöntemlerle testosteronun vücuda geri kazandırılması şeklindedir. Böylelikle cinsel işlevlerdeki olumsuzluklar veya da kas kütlesindeki azalma gibi bir önceki slaytta bahsettiğimiz olumsuzlukla ekarte edilmeye çalışılmaktadır. Apilerinin çok uzun zamanlardan bu yana özellikle Doğu Avrupa ve Asya'nın geleneksel tıbbında cinsiyet hormonlarını arttırma, cinsiyel gelişimi destekleme, canlılığı arttırma ya da kısırlık tedavisi gibi birçok alanda farklı şekilde yararlanılmaktadır. Bundan yola çıkarak bilim insanlarımız apilerinin e, özellikle bu etkileri üzerine e, araştırmalarda bulunmuşlardı. Bu araştırmalara değinecek olursak damızlık koçların damızlık, damızlık koçlar üzerine apilerinin androjen etkisinin e, incelendiği bir çalışmada Dört farklı koç gruba ayrılmış ve bunlardan üç gruba sırasıyla 10, 15 ve 20 mg bölü kilogram olacak şekilde apilernin verilmiştir. Apilernin belirli oranlarda sodyum klorit ile karıştırılarak liyafımızı edilerek koçların beslenmesine tabi tutulmuştur. Deney sonucunda apilernin uygulanan koçlarda üreme Fonksiyonlarında ve yavru verimlerinde artış olduğu gözlenmiş. Ayrıca bu çalışma için optimum dozun 15 mg, mg bölü kilogram olarak belirlenmiştir. Bir diğer çalışmada ise e, domuzların bir diğer çalışmada ise e, domuzların Cinsel aktivitesi ve ejakülat parametreleri üzerine çalışma yapılmış ve burada 2 ile 4 aylık domuzlara günde 3 mililitre olacak şekilde 5 ile 12 aylık domuzlara ise günde 4 mililitre olacak şekilde parantel yolla etanolik apilerinin homojenizatları verilmiştir. Deney 7 gün boyunca sürmüştür. Deney sonucunda domuzlardaki üreme niteliklerinde ve cinsel işlevlerde artış olduğu görülmüştür. Ayrıca seminal bezlerin ağırlığında ortalama %20, epididimiste ise ortalama %25 civarında bir artış gözlenmiştir. Deneyin ikinci aşamasında ise cinsel işlev bozukluğu olan domuzlara e 2 ay boyunca haftada 10 mililitre olacak şekilde apilerinin aynı şekilde parantel e, olacak şekilde uygulanmıştır. Ve deney sonucunda cinsel fonksiyonlarının %83 oranında geri kazanıldığı görülmüştür. Ek olarak canlılık, hareketlilik, yer hücre yoğunluğu ya da ejakülasyon volümü gibi yani semen parametrelerinde e, bir gelişim olduğu gözlenmiştir. 
kısırlaştırılmış olgun sıçanlar üzerine yapılan bir diğer çalışmada ise yine apilalin androjenik aktivitesi değerlendirilmişti. Günlük kilogram başına 110 miligram olacak şekilde ağız yoluyla 10 gün boyunca apilalin verilmiştir. Deney sonucunda apilalinin sıçanlar üzerinde androjenik etkisinin e, görüldüğü kanıtlanmıştı. Ayrıca plazma testosteron seviyelerinde, penis ucu ağırlıklarında ve seminal veziküllerinde e, artış olduğu belirtilmişti. Çalışmanın ikinci aşamasında apilalinin androjenik etkisinin hangi biyoloji içerdiği hangi biyolojik bileşenlerden kaynaklandığını belirlemek amacıyla nükleer manyetik rezonans ve kütle spektrum fotometrisi analizleri yapılmış ve analiz sonucunda birer yağ asidi esteri olan metil palmitat ve metil oleatin androjenik etkiye neden olan ana bileşenler olduğu ifade edilmiştir. Bağma Hocam ve arkadaşlarının yaptığı bir diğer e, çalışmada ise e, erkek bilinçlerin e, büyüme davranışları ve ikinci cinsiyet karakterleri üzerine apilalinin etkisi araştırılmıştır. Bu çalışmada 40, e, 21 günlük 40 erkek bilinç seçilmiş ve bunlar iki gruba ayrılmıştır. Bunlarda birinci gruba standart besinle birlikte günlük 4 gram olacak şekilde apilalinin verilmiş. Diğer grup ise standart besin ile birlikte 4 mililitre olacak şekilde su verilmiştir. Deney 20 gün boyunca sürmüştür ve bu süre zarfında herhangi bir şekilde antibiyotik ya da geliştirici takviye ürünler kullanılmamıştır. 20 günün sonunda kontrol gruplarıyla apilerle verilen gruplar karşılaştırıldığında apilerle olan grupları e, İbik boyutlarında ve sarkık gerdan boyutlarında artış olduğu, ayrıca agresif tavırlarında da e, artış olduğu görülmüştür. İbik ve sarkık gerdan boyut, e, boyutu piliçlerde ikinci cinsiyet karakter, karakterleriyle ilişkilendirilmektedir. Ve birçok çalışma e, ikinci cinsiyet karakterlerinin gelişiminde testosteronu ve androjenik etkilerin e, androjenik hormonların etkisini e, kanıtlamıştır. Bu nedenle çalışma sonucunda apilerinin androjenik etkiye veya testosteron benzeri bir etkiye sahip olduğu belirtilmiştir. Bir diğer çalışmaya bakacağım baktığımızda ise yine piliçlerde yapılan bir çalışma piliçlerdeki cinsel gelişimi artırması ve korkuyu azaltması üzerine apilerinin etkisi incelenmiştir. Bu çalışmada 120, 23 günlük 128 e, piliç seçilmiş ve bunlar 64 erkek ve 64 dişi olacak şekilde belirlenmiştir. Apilerinin 28. ve 55. günler arasında oral yolda piliçlere verilmiştir. 128 piliç 4 farklı gruba ayrılmıştır. Birinci grup Sadece standart besinle beslenmiş ve kontrol grubu olarak ifade edilir. İkinci grupta standart besin yanında 1 mililitre su verilmiş. Üçüncü ve dördüncü gruba ise standart besinle birlikte farklı oranlarda apilerlin verilmiştir. Çalışma sonucunda kontrol gruplarıyla karşılaştırdığımızda Dişi ve erkek e, piliçlerin büyüme performansında herhangi bir değişiklik gözlenmemiştir. Buna karşın erkek piliçlerin e, ibik gelişiminde, testis ağırlığında ve testosteron konsantrasyonunda artış olduğu görülmüş. Ayrıca erken yaştaki erkek piliçlerde apilerin uygulamasının e, cinsel gelişiminin uyardığı ifade edilmiştir. Fakat ee, aynı şekilde e, bu etki dişi piliçlerde görülmemiş. Yani apilerinin ikinci cinsiyet karakterleri üzerine dişi piliçlerde etki etmemiştir. Ee, sonuç olarak e, değerli bir arı ürünü olan apilerinin 
e, birçok biyolojik aktiviteye sahip besinlere e, içermektedir ve bu nedenle de günümüzde değerli bir ürün olarak atfet edilmektedir. E, bu nedenle gerek geleneksel tıpta gerekse tıbbi e, tedavilerde takviye edici olarak kullanılmaktadır. Maalesef ki e, özür dilerim, e, insanlar ve hayvanlarda cinsel gelişim sağlıklı bir hayatın e, ve yaşamın e, önemli bir parçasını içermektedir. Bununla birlikte günümüzde cinsel isteksizlik, uyarılma bozuklukları, kısırlık gibi sayamayacağım birçok e, cinsel problem ortaya çıkmaktadır. E, bundan önceki çalışmalarda Androjenik hormonların cinsel işlevlerle ve cinsel fonksiyonlarla doğrudan ilişkili olduğunu ifade etmektedir. Bundan yola çıkarak ve sonundaki çalışmalara bakarak androjen hormonlarınca zengin olan apilerinin androjen eksikliği sendromunda kullanılabileceği düşünülmektedir. Burada dikkat etmemiz gereken iki nokta var. Bunlardan bahsetmek istiyorum. Birincisi şu ana kadarki çalışmalarda apilerinin androjenik etkisinin içerdiği zengin besin ögelerinden mi yoksa eser miktarda içerdiği biyolojik aktif materyallerden mi kaynaklandığı tam olarak e, kanıtlanamamıştı. Bu nedenle androjenik ve anabolik etki mekanizmalarının tam olarak e, in vitro ve in vivo şartlarda araştırılması ve aydınlatılması gerekmektedir. Diğer taraftan bilindiği üzere tüm arı ürünlerinde olduğu gibi apilerinin de kimyasal içeriği, coğrafi şartlar, arı türleri, iklim koşulları gibi birçok etkiye bağlı olarak değişmektedir. Eğer farmakolojik olarak apilerinini kazandırmak istiyorsak standartizasyon çalışmalarının mutlaka yapılması gerekmektedir. Sunumum burada sona erdi. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this nice presentation. We learn a lot about the apilarnil with three presentations, and I congratulate all the presenters. Thank you very much. And we have seven minutes left, so I'm looking for the questions at the end of the section. There is a question, Dr. Blogger, from Mustafa Unal. Uh, Dr. Glover says glucose doesn't feed the cancer. Then what does? Uh, this is the question. Uh, Dr. Glover, would you like to give an answer for this question? Can you repeat the question? The glucose does not feed cancer or what? Glucose I... doesn't feed the cancer. Yes. Uh, so what does? Uh, this is the question. It is, you know, that it's very fashionate that people who have cancer uh, have a, a zero carbohydrate diet. And uh, this uh, literature I cited shows that uh, that when you really go to zero, then your the, the um, um, death rate goes up and you need uh, still some carbohydrates. So that uh, honey is something bad for people who um, have cancer is not true. So that uh, is, uh, let's say, of course, we need uh, would need some studies, but this is a study just on on the uh, on the sugars, on the, uh, but that shows very clearly um, that what we need is a kind of mix. And uh, of course, our honey has much more, much better components than just the sugars. Okay. Thank you. Uh, maybe we can say uh, for addition, uh, apilarnir is a novel product, so. Uh, it should be um, more and more research we need to make, uh, especially in the in ovo uh, on humans. So uh, maybe we can uh, discuss about the details for using uh, pre or post uh, or active season of the cancer. So uh, maybe we need uh, more uh, research for to uh, make the conclusion about it. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, other question for uh, Mrs. Alina Varadi. Uh, there is no testosterone in apilarnil, whereas Dr. Yildiz says the whole purpose of apilarnil is androgen. Uh, there seems to be a little contraindication. 
contradiction. So, yes, contradiction, sorry. Uh, so, uh, would you like to give an answer? Or... Yes, of course. Uh, in the past, you know, that was write this book. The name is Apilar Nil from Ilyeshu. In that period, he was do this analysis and all what I tell it, it's about uh, what I found it in this book. This was made in the past and um, all this information was published. So in the first moment, we took this information like we found it and after we put it in place, but we don't see adverse reaction. So we use it like this because now we, I hear for the first time the other version so we will try to do more big dose to see what's happened. And if in practice, we can so clearly that it's like this or not. No, uh, the, the question is... Uh, at here, yes. and there is, um, I, I'm not sure about the name, it's Bumikova 1999. Um, there is a clear uh, stated um, analysis about the, the uh, hormones which are in apilanil. Um, but my opinion is that's not only the hormones which are in, but also pre-stages or uh, plant hormones where we still, yeah, where we're not sure what it is, but there are factors which increase the hormone production in the, in the, in the, in the man or woman. I think this is the important thing. This is something still up uh, to the research to find these factors. Um, but it's also, I think the, the article from 1999 is now 20 years old, but it's still, uh, from my point of view, valid. And there are others who found also hormones in the apilanil. Yes, and in our point of view, uh, even we offer huge dose, like 20 grams per day, we don't saw the adverse reaction, something who it's disturbing, uh, look like it's more modulatory, like all the other B products. So uh, even you can find it there, it's not so, uh, means something what the body can process it and if it's needed, uh, use it. And if it's not needed, maybe it's uh, put it out. Um, yes, but uh, Alina, uh, did you see a study which analyzed apilarnil and yes. they didn't found testosterone? Yes, said, they tell, uh, yes, they tell in the past that was not found it ah. there. Only very, very, very little amount, like okay. 0 0.0004, something like this. Okay, but it's so present I, still, something. It's present, but yeah. they detect very low, very, very low uh, level. Yeah, you know, hormones are very, very low anyway. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yes. So yeah. it. Yes. Yes. yes. I think this is the same debate like estrogen and royal jelly, because there are some studies they say you have estrogen, and then Japanese came and say no, royal jelly doesn't have an estrogenic effect, uh, increased fertility, but we don't know the mechanism. So I think further studies are needed in both. Yes, yes. Well, one explanation, like what, what said Alina, that higher doses doesn't do uh, bad things, is that in the liver, the liver has the capacity to transform the male hormones into female hormones and vice versa, female hormones into male hormones if it's needed for the balance. So some, some of this uh, modulation is done by our liver. So in the practice, in the clinical part, we may see these uh, differences. But anyway, uh, uh, it was very, very, uh, very interesting, all the presentations today. We should do, uh, Ali, because you are also here. Uh, uh, in one uh, uh, morning, I wake up with the idea. This Congress is so fascinating. And uh, we should do maybe uh, later, a couple of months later, after we rest, we should do another Congress, but only one one product. Like one Congress, two days, only at Pilar Nil. And oh. include Queen Larva too. Yes, yes, Ali, <laughs> you're right. All, all larva, be larva. Yes. And, and each one uh, will take uh, one week. And, uh, f f and we will spend all year by uh, co Congress on Apitherapy. And leave all the people who are stacked on the queue to be treated. <laughs> yes. uh, uh, do you mind if I have a word, uh, Professor Banu Yijet? Please. Uh, thank you. Uh, well, I would like to thank all the participants uh, coming from Romania and from Germany, uh, Dr. Mirella and Alina and uh, Dr. Thomas 
and also to Gülsüm Merve Boyracı uh, for their uh, participation. I would like to thank the moderator here, Professor Bani Yücel, and also to, of course, Dr. Stefan Stangaciu. And uh, we, we are, I was thinking that we, you know, if, if it was possible to make a physical Congress, we would probably spend more time uh, with each other and discuss the issues uh, <laughs> and uh, drink tea, coffee, and uh, sleep quite late. Uh, we would see in the lobby, people are still uh, chatting, uh, right? And spending time and discussing issues about uh, scientific issues or social things. So uh, we discussed with uh, Stefan if we can do it uh, here as well. And we uh, spoke to our uh, organizer, uh, uh, organizer team, and they, they told us that it is possible that we can have rooms after the day. Uh, so we can have round tables, up to 100 people uh, can meet in one room. So. Uh, we will tr start from today. Uh, I don't know if it was already announced. Have you spoken about this, Stefan? Uh, uh, sorry? Uh, have you mentioned about the round table uh, uh, idea? Yeah, yes, I put here in the chat area, uh, all the people who are now here, there are 160 people in our uh, panel now. So go to the chat area uh, somewhere in the middle and you'll see the login the how uh, where to log in the the the url you know to so to... at the end of the day uh, yes. we can have an opportunity to uh, meet in the in the meeting rooms so uh, please at from 6 30 to 7 30 we will be in the room uh, round table of the day so anybody who would like to meet with the speakers, uh, presenters, and moderators, anybody who has time and who would like to come together, you can come and uh, meet in that room. And if you want, uh, you can uh, uh, take your group and get into the direct next room and, or another room. So it is possible to have like in the physical congresses, to have meetings after the Congress. And there is even a place to have tea. But you have to take your Money. tea. So, oh, yeah, Jerry. You Poland, be yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sure. So anything you want, you can take it and uh, chat around the table with Stefan, with Thomas, or Mirella, or Gülsüm, or Van Yücel, or Alina. So you, you can just uh, invite your friends and let's go to the next room. And uh, let's discuss about Apilarnil there, you can say, or you can have a discussion or, or socializing in the round table room altogether. So I just wanted to uh, announce this nice uh, opportunity uh, that we have. So uh, please, uh, moderator, I'm sorry I, if I interrupted. Thank you very much for this useful uh, knowledge. And Thank you. Uh, now uh, I want to close the section because uh, we don't have any time uh, for to discuss more. Uh, so I would like to thank all our uh, respected uh, presenters and uh, also participants and wish all of you a good afternoon. Thank you very much. Thank you.